Hey everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's staying safe. Hope everybody's keeping their sanity doing COVID-19 social distancing. It's day whatever. I know it's been a little over a month already. And like I said, I hope everybody's doing well. Everybody's in good spirits. It's hard to comprehend um, this time. It's crazy times right now. Uh, but as long as you're alive, you're healthy, let's be grateful for that. Let's uh, pray for the people that aren't. And uh, our love and support goes out to the first responders, as always, uh, and also the food service industry. Um, very good to see them in positive spirits, doing good things, or doing the best they can under these uh, circumstances. So today, I wanted to, I was just going to make a pork tenderloin, a adobo rub pork tenderloin with some broccoli rabe and some sweet potatoes. It's going to be a simple and easy recipe that you can make at home. You know, I'm still cooking for myself, so I hope you enjoy. I'm going to break up this video in segments to make it a little bit more easier to follow so you can see really what I'm doing. And I appreciate all the, the, the love and support, everybody reaching out. You know, I greatly appreciate that stuff. I always do. It really means a lot to me, especially during this time. It's really been good to like talk to people, engage with people, and I appreciate everything that all my friends and family have done. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> we're back with the pork loin and our, our dry rub. This is what we're going to do first is our dry rub mix, our adobo. You can mix it. It's just a dry rub that I like to use on the pork. So right now what I have is two tablespoons of smoked paprika, two tablespoons of granulated garlic, two tablespoons of onion powder, about a teaspoon of ground black, black pepper, a half a teaspoon of turmeric, about a teaspoon of cinnamon, about a half a teaspoon of cumin, toasted and then ground, and also I have about a teaspoon of ground ginger so this is the mix and oh excuse me I also got about a tablespoon of salt so all I do is I put everything in a bowl and then I mix it you can add brown sugar to this if you want it Gives it like a little sweetness, but we might use some sweetness later. And you just mix it up. So then what I have here is, I usually don't like to smear it. And plus I'm running out of gloves because all the supermarkets and stuff don't have gloves. So. Or CVS. So I have a little tray here. And then what I'm going to do is take this and just put it in the adobo. And what you're going to want to do is let this sit for a little bit. Oh, this is looking good. And then that's it. You just let it sit for about maybe an hour or two if you want, maybe less. Um, because you want that to really like soak in into the meat. You want it to like really absorb. You could do it even 24 hours if you want it. I don't recommend it, but if you wanted to, you could. All it's going to do is going to keep, keep marinating and soaking in. Like the flesh is going to soak in all that stuff. So that's what you want. It looks good. Looking good. You know how we do. And then what next I got is the sweet potatoes. I'm gonna roast them in the oven. Um, I'm gonna roast them in the oven for about at 350 degrees, 375, depending on how hot your oven is. And then all I'm gonna do is is like hit it with a little bit of oil, just so I can coat it. Probably like just rub it on there. And 
then I'm gonna season it. If you don't have to, because we're gonna season it later. And then you put it in the oven. That's it. All right, now we're down with the sweet potatoes. So we roasted them, they came out the oven. They're like soft, so that's what, you, that's what you're looking for. So be careful, because they're gonna be hot. And then what I have here is my little bowl. Do my little bowl. Be careful, they're hot. Slice it through and just peel it. It's good to do it when it's hot. Well, not hot, but like let it cool a little bit. Let it cool about five, ten minutes. And then, as you can see, this is probably still smoking. That's okay. But what we're going to do is put it in our bowl. That was a little nasty. I didn't like that little part. <laughs> So I'm going to put that to the side. Ooh. And then what I have here is two, two, table, or two teaspoons of cinnamon and about a half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit less, of nutmeg. And then I have honey. smash it you can put this in the food processor you can do all sorts of things Always adjust for seasoning. Take that out. Get my spoon. So that sounds like a little mash, you know? You want to serve the, the pork loin. I'm going to wrap this and leave it on top of the stove because the oven is on, so it'll have that little bit of heat. So next, I like to do with the broccoli rabe. You know, obviously you rinse it. You rinse it. And then what I do is Probably cut it in half. And what I'm gonna do is blanching, blanching. So I have a pot of water here, boil it. I'm gonna season it. <clears throat> some people ask like, how much do you season? Uh, some people would recommend it tasting almost like seawater. That's the right amount. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna blanch it. And the reason I blanch it is to take some of that bitterness out and to soften up some of these stems and stuff. I eat the steps. I don't care. I like the steps. They're good. They're not gonna kill you, right? So, so then I just blanch it. I might take out some of the bigger stems because I want it to cook evenly. Uh, not some of those big ones. You can see it. I got real vibrant. I'm just gonna throw that away. And then what I have here is a bowl of ice water. That's what you want. A bowl of ice water. So you just wanna blanch it for like maybe about a minute or so. I usually like to blanch some of my vegetables ahead of time. And then when it's time to cook, I'm just gonna saute this real quick with a little bit of garlic. 
The garlic, yes, the garlic. If you cook it too long, it's gonna discolor the greens. It's gonna take it out. And don't leave it in the ice water too long because then it'll become waterlogged. That means it'll be with a lot of, the vegetables are gonna soak up all that like water. So you just wanna like keep it in there so it's cool. Make sure you stir it, you agitate it. You can turn the water off. You agitate it, make sure that it's, it's cooling. That is cool. Yeah. When it comes down to temp before I, I cook it again. And you got these like nice little long stems. You can see the green. And then that's it. And then what I usually like to do is after I let it cool, I get a little rag. And then I just drain it a little bit. And then I just set it aside for later use. But we're gonna saute with some garlic, like I said. And the blanching is just to like get rid of some of that bitterness and things like that. So uh, that's that step. Yeah, we back. Ready to do the adobo rub pork. We get our pan hot. We put some oil in it, as you can see. We got our tongs, very important. We have something to hold hot things with. In this case, we have a towel. Maybe we might season it a little bit more. A little salt and pepper. And I'm using kosher salt, but you can use sea salt. I would never use that table salt. Ooh, you know how we test the pan? Make sure it's hot. Yeah. So what you want to do is just get a nice little crust. You see that brown? And then you want to see it all sides. That's the important part. Ooh, be careful. Always have my little Grease deflector. Can a lot of accidents happen. A lot of grease flying in people's faces. No joke, people. Be careful when you're like cooking. Alright. What we're gonna do is after we sear all sides, we're gonna put it on a pan. And then put it in the oven. Hey, we're back. Now what we're doing is taking the pork loin out the oven. Uh, you want it to reach an uh, internal temperature like 165. Make sure you have your handy thermometer. Your handy thermometer. Uh, but then we're going to let it rest there for a little bit. But in the meantime, again, with the pan. I want to saute my broccoli rabe. So I have my broccoli, I have my pan, I have my broccoli rabe ready. Have the garlic, and what I did was, is like I sliced the garlic. I sliced it. Thank you. 
Make sure your pan is hot. I'm going to put the pork tenderloin on my cutting board. So then we adjust the heat. We got it hot. No, it's hot. So what I do is like I, I put the garlic in first. Let that cook. Always have my spoons and stuff ready. You just want to be sure that you watch it, that you don't want it to burn. But you want it to let it cook down, because if you don't, it'll be... So it'll start to get brown, little golden brown, all around the edges. Make sure you take the food. But we, usually what I like to do is uh, let the, the protein rest. Always let it rest before you slice it or cut it so all juices and everything can settle. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. So what I want to do with this is, is just slice it. You can see but like how juicy that is now I'm gonna put it on my plate sauce for this. I got my little pot. And I got some of that juice left over from the roasting pan that we had. I'm just gonna put it in there real quick. It's a little juice. It's a little juice. That's what we need right now. In the meantime I just dropped drop my drag so I have to get me a new one. I was banging like that both. Bang in. So we 
what you want to do is like the little juice. Let that reduce. Oh. little munchies oh yeah then I got a little bit of a Chopped oregano. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a pinch. Just to give it some aromatics. And you just pour that right on top. There, folks, there you have it. You have that and the sweet potatoes. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of uh, crispy onion. That's it, folks. That's my dinner for tonight. So I hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me for that little uh, pork loin demo. It looks pretty tasty. I'm ready to eat some right now. And again, I can't uh, appreciate enough all the love and support and the engagement I've been getting. Let's our thoughts and prayers are for the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, everybody battling this. Um, us, because we're in this together, and this is kind of a new, something we've never seen before. It's really surreal. But I hope everybody's in good spirits, keeping positive, doing these uh, self-isolation quarantine days, staying home, staying safe, staying healthy. And a big shout out goes out to the, the small, food service businesses doing their thing and um, I hope everybody survives I hope everybody comes back or comes out of this on the flip side so with that said have a good day have a good night whatever time of day it is you're watching this and thank you again and see me see me on the next time have a great night